These people were from Michigan? Minnesota. 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 Yes, sir. These people were from Kansas. Kansas. Step right here and look at the back. Not in Kansas anymore. Take out, come, come around here. Oh, take all the pictures you want. I'm going to tell a little story if you want to hear it. We do, we do. All right, where y'all from? Uh, Who took the crutches? Who took the crutches? I took the My name's Jamie Wall. I was the first person that crashed tonight. That night. It happened on a Thursday night. This is an actual picture of the plane. This is the band that was on the plane that night. There's a third girl in the band, JoJo from Mississippi. She's not in the picture because she didn't get on the plane that night. This plane would hold 47 people. There was 26 people on this plane. Only six people died. A lot of, I'm going to show you a picture after a while of the crash. You wouldn't believe anybody leaving. The plane crashed about 800 yards right yonder. The landowner won't let us do anything there. And a committee got together several years ago and we're going to put a little sign up on the road. And we said we'd raise $3,900. And we got, Somebody said, well, let's start a GoFundMe page. If Leonard Skinner fans, half of them sent us a dollar, we can have the money. Mm -hmm. We got more than $3,900. And when we went to put the sign up, the state of Mississippi wouldn't let us. You have to pass a law. So we had some congresswomen that helped us pass a law. And we went to Brookhaven Monument, Brookhaven, Mississippi, and told them what we wanted to do, and told them how much money they had, and they gave us a little credit. <laughs> And we took the credit and we bought these three stones and we added to it. These three stones cost $65,000. Just the three stones. So but we, it's all paid for. <laughs> it's all for. We got Wi-Fi, we got running water. We have a committee. Some wants to build a bathroom, some don't. Some likes the quietness. But this past spring, I don't know if y'all know Gene Odom. Gene Odom is a survivor of the crash and Ronnie Penzance's best friend. He wants to build a monument for Ronnie. And they wouldn't let him put it down there in Florida. So he's going to bring it up here and sometime in the year we're going to put another monument there. Like I say, this is the band. Ronnie died that night. The six that died died on impact. The six that died were right here. The plane had one door. It's right back here. The plane come down through trees bigger than this. It run out of gas. For several reasons, it run out of gas. It ripped the wings off, hit the ground and skidded, and hit a big tree. If it hadn't hit that big tree, I don't think it killed anybody. But the six that died were right there. There were seven people in the back. The plane hit and kind of busted right here and kind of crinkled, wrinkled. You couldn't walk from the back of the plane to the front. When you go in the back door, you couldn't get up in the front of the plane. There's a seven in the back, three walked at this farmhouse down here. Harmless Powell, the drummer, walked there. Ken Payton and Mark Frank. There was three people laying outside the plane. One was Gene Odom. I didn't find Gene when I got there. And if you hear stories, Gene said that I got burnt out. It, it wasn't no fire, he got burnt out because the ice dripped in his eye. And, and he was up under a motor and it burned his eye. Steve Laurie was laying on the outside of the plane. I found him and covered him up with a hunting coat and told him help was coming. And then there was uh, Welch, Paul Welch. I co uh, covered him up with a hunting coat and told him somebody was coming. Steve was an electrician, Paul Welch was a sound man. I tell this story about a guy named Mark Howard. Mark Howard lives in Pasadena, Texas. He and Mark are good friends now. I couldn't get nobody to answer me in the back. There was a seventh person back there. His name was Ron Eckerman, but he wouldn't answer me. He wanted me to help everybody. He wanted everybody to get help before he did. He wouldn't answer, he was covered up, he, he just stayed quiet. I knew I could, I, to me the plane was tilted, these windows were almost on the ground, the bottom was sitting on the ground. 
So I'm trying to find a way up here. I knew people was up here. So I climbed up on top of the plane. It happened right at dark. The way I found it, Stuart Hemphill called me, if y'all know him, and told me a plane come <laughs> over his house. He said, John, I thought it crashed. I called the airport, and the airport said it did. I didn't even ask Stuart how big, who it was, or nothing. I said, Stuart, where is it? He said, all I know is between Gillsburg and Magnolia. When I come down the road with my truck, I could see a helicopter sitting there right at dark. And I said to myself, that plane's under that helicopter. I thought it was one little plane putting out ant poles and that they had one person in it. I seen it all afternoon. That's what I was thinking it was. I stopped at this farmhouse till this farmer that I was gonna go across his farm pasture to our airplane grass. At that time, three people had walked out of the field. Armless Powell, Ken Payton, and Mark Frank. The farmer had a gun. The farmer did shoot up in the air, told him to get away. He thought they was convicts and he thought the helicopter was hunting for mm. But nobody shot Arnold's Powell. Mm. Arnold's Powell said on national TV three months ago in front of millions of people that he got shot. Nobody uh. shot Arnold's. <laughs> if he'd have got shot that 243, he'd have known it. <laughs> Arnold's didn't even get admitted to really to a hospital. He walked out, they took him to Mac No, you Mac No, you wouldn't have met him. They, he went to McComb and they really wouldn't have met him. The hospital. He was the only one that didn't really get me. He wasn't around. He tells stories, his reels right now. I'll tell you the truth. There was no problem. That's Arnold was right there. And Arnold was just been here with his band and been confronted and got mad and left. <coughs> That's Arnold's. Anyway, I told the moat man who I was, let these people, they, they hunt and help. I said, let them use the phone. And I went across the pasture. When I got to the woods, it was a field. I had to walk up in the woods and we had to wait a creek this deep. The first time I climbed through the trees and went across the creek. And when I walked up on the plane, I walked up on the front of it first. You jumped from tree to tree? Limb to limb like a monkey. Okay. When I walked up on the front of the plane, I got out of my knees and prayed to God to give me strength. First person I saw was the pilot. I knew I couldn't help him. Okay. So I knew I, I couldn't help him. I'm looking for gas. I'm looking for the wings, the tanks. That's where the mm -hmm. gas tanks are. The wings are way up in the woods, been ripped off. There's no smell of gas, it's dark. I got a flashlight, but I got a helicopter. You gotta remember the whole time, there's a helicopter, a boom, 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 wind blowing, noise. I found the two guys laying on the ground, covering them up with hunting coats. I went around it twice, I felt safe. I went up in the plane, couldn't find nobody. I went up the plane a couple times. Couldn't find no way in, so I climbed up on top. When I got up on top, there was a gash about this long, about this wide. It wasn't very big. So I'm reading, I got down on my knees and prayed again. I stuck my hand in that crack. I thank God wanted me to stick my hand in that crack. I found a guy named Mark Howard. He's alive, he can't move. All I can see is his eyes. This is what the hatchet's for. So I'm reading, I took a hatchet. I took this hatchet and chopped the hole in that plane got Mark Howard out of the plane. He's a electrician spotlighter. He lives in Pasadena, Texas now. You gotta understand, these people are 70 years old now, I'm 70. I was 25 that night. Mark Howard worked with Molly Hatcher, Peter Franklin, Barbara Mandrell, Merle Haggard, but he said he worked 10 years with Don Williams. He loved working with Don Williams, if anybody knows who Don Williams is. Mm -hmm. Don Williams is country. He has got countries you can get. He went to Germany with me. But Mark's a good old guy. Fine. So after, and when I got ready to pull Mark out of the plane, I didn't know what was wrong with him. I said, fella, I don't know what's wrong with you, but it's probably gonna hurt like hell when I pull you out, so grit your teeth. And somebody tapped me on the shoulder. It was Ben Lang on the highway patrol, and Ben Lang said, Jamie, help Sear. That's when I noticed three or four people below me on the ground walking around. 
other people that got there. So, and when Ben, ben Langham Judge. pulled Mark out of the plane, <laughs> we handed him down to Stuart Hempfield. Stuart was there. And I never saw Mark again to about five years ago. The guy pulled up in a red truck with a Texas tag and he got out. He said he was a survivor. And we said, well, tell us about that night. He said, ain't much to tell. He said, the doctor should have said I should have never lived. I had a gash in my head I should have bled to death from. Broke jaw, broke shoulders, broke ribs, broke hip, and broke legs. He's had 18 hip surgeries. He said, I should have never lived. He said, somebody was with me that night. He said, a guy was trying to get me out, and all I know he told me, it's going to hurt like hell, grit your teeth. And when he said that, I said, you're looking at the guy that pulled you out. And somebody took a picture. I'm going to show you a picture in a minute. Where somebody took our picture, and we realized who we were. But we're good friends. And I met a lot of people since then. In the back of the plane was Ron Eckerman. I told you he didn't want no help. Well, later that night, after we thought we had about a, out of the plane, I had four brothers there that night. My mom and daddy was there, three sisters. I had another sister and brother who wasn't there. But anyway, we were back there talking, me and my brother and another guy, Gerald Wall and Dennis Wilson. And the guy in the plane knocked on the plane and said, well, y'all come help me. He could hear us talking. Now, you got to remember the helicopter up there the whole time. So we go up in there and bang, it was Ron Eckman. He had broke ankles. And that's when he asked for help. This is Leslie Hawkins. She's a singer. I tell a story on Leslie. Leslie didn't want to leave that night. She wanted to help everybody. Her nose was cut just by slap off. She was bleeding like on wood. And we had to make her leave. But she wanted to stay with help. Like I say, Ronnie died at night. Cassidy Gaines died at night. And her brother, Steve, died. Dean Patrick's a manager. And the other two people were the pilots. That died. Billy Powell has passed away. He had cancer. Alan Collins had heart trouble. Jerry Rollins is still in the band today. Arnold Powell's got his own band. Leon Wilkinson has passed away. Now, most of a lot of the other crew hands, and that's the names of them. Some of them come here, I know them, I pick up the phone and call them. They are still alive. I'm gonna try to show y'all some pictures. You're welcome to come up here and see them or whatever. But th this is the plane, like I say, it would hold 47 people. This is the plane that night, the next morning. There's, we got tw 20 people off this plane alive. Mm -hmm. How much to it? If you can't see it, just tell me I'll hold it over closer or whatever. I, there's a flare on it. I'm, I'm surprised it. people left. I oh my not goodness. see it. Now, all the junk you see laying on the ground, we threw out of the plane. Uh, just trying to make to room. Yeah. So, did about five, six people go up in the plane. There wasn't no room. And we were throwing stuff out. Can you tilt it down? I busted some t-shirts, a suitcase over just to get t-shirts to make bandages and stuff. Uh -huh. I thought. Uh, Jamie, were you a volunteer, a medic or anything? No, we, we, a... I don't volunteer fire department. Okay. And that's why Stuart called me. Mm -hmm. Me and Gerald and Dennis and Stuart and Uncle Jimmy Dale. We did have a little party. And he said, Jamie, they might need help. So we all went out. That's why he called me. I live eight miles from here. Were you a Leonard Skinner fan? No. Did you you didn't know? <laughs> Are you now? I knew Leonard Skinner sang Sweet and Home Alabama. And just to tell you, I watched Channel Nine big? News out of Baton Rouge. And there was a news reporter named Needle Labaday. Watch her every evening six and ten. After we got everybody out of the plane, we stand there. I done crossed the creek ten or twelve times, soaking wet. And she walks up there with a camera, and they got the big cameras. And, I knew her. I kind of jokingly said, you're late. She said, where's that plane? I said, right across that creek up under that helicopter. She hit that creek in her brand new cowboy boots and the cameraman right behind her. I'm right behind her. I got on the other side of the creek and she said, I need to do an interview. And I said, see that guy, that white hat? Go talk to him. And I sent her to my brother, Gerald. 
Highway Patrolman? Well, Jarl wasn't patrolling then, he was deputy sheriff. Okay. Jarl was a deputy sheriff and he was constable. Okay. I was a volunteer deputy sheriff. We was all on the fire department. I ran a free inch discount store, a dollar store. I was a manager. Dennis Wilson was there. He was the justice court judge. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I sent her to Jarl. Jarl sent her back to me because he knew I was the first one there. And she, I wouldn't tell her my name. She said, um, do you know who's on that plane? I said, they tell me it's a rock and roll group. She said, it's Leonard Skinner. And I said, well, which one was he? I didn't, I thought it was a person. Gotcha, yeah. And she educated me there and told me who Leonard Skinner was. She said his name, the lead singer was Ronnie Van Zandt. So I learned that night. Are you a fan now? I, I go see them, you know, I collect her. So I, I collect all kind of music. Yeah. I like the Beatles. I loved Elvis. I met Elvis. I saw him in concert. And I was a big Elvis fan. He had died in August. So this was in October. Did, uh, did this in incident change your life then, Jamie? Would you I say? I can hate in some way it has. It made you think about life because you never know what's going to happen. So. What happened to the other band member? I'm sorry. I'm hard to hear. What happened to the other band member? The other band member? Like I say, yeah, he's still in the band. Artemis has got his own band. And Leslie Hawkins is in bad health because she's still alive. The rest of them have passed away. I think Artemis might have passed away now. No. No? He's Nobody still going? Still alive. Okay. Oh, oh. Joe, do you know Joe Chambers does the interviews for, he's got the Musicians Hall of Fame. He just died, so I, maybe it was him. Well, Artemis is still alive. Really. Okay. Uh, but I, don't sh I want to show you a picture of uh, Mark Howell. Get my phone to come back up here. Showed you the, the wreckage pictures. Me and Mark's good friend, I like Mark. This is Mark Howard. This is when somebody we realized who we were. When he was telling me mm -hmm. about pulled out, somebody took our picture. How many years later is that? This was five years ago. It's 40 years later. Now that's Mark. What he looked like then and now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's his back, backstage pass ticket. Uh, this is Steve Lawyer, one of the guys I found on the ground that night and covered up with hot and coat. The little guy in the middle, Mark Frank, he's the one that walked to the house that night with Arnimus Powell and Ken Payton. The big guy in the black shirt is Paul Welch, the guy I also found that night. The guy in a white t-shirt is Gene Odom. If you see Gene Odom, he's probably got a white t-shirt on or a flannel shirt. Gene Odom gave him this hat. This is a Gene Odom hat. This is a piece of the plane that somebody made a hat pin for me out of the wreckage. And you see Gene anywhere, so you you don't ever know, because I, I ride motorcycles. I was up towards Jackson, Weston, I think. Waffle House. Somebody poked me in the back as Gene Odom. He says, I like breakfast too. I said, Sit down. I'll buy you breakfast. But he got a daughter in Oklahoma. He rides all the country. He ain't got one eye. He a dry, he might he might drive up any minute. You can't never tell about Gene. Is he the one that burned his eye? Yeah, the eye from his eye. Um they they started in Jacksonville, right? Florida, their band, like as teenagers. I was just wondering yeah, if any of them ended Jackson, up back in Jacksonville. Huh? I wonder if any ended up back in J Jacksonville. Well, yeah, I feel sure all of these went back to Jacksonville. That's what I Gene lives right below Jacksonville. He, he claims a little town right below it. No, I think Contra Vedra? But I know a lot of them, some of them live in Knoxville, Tennessee. And stuff. Jamie, what was the cause of um, uh, fuel shortage? Well, that's many reasons. Okay. They didn't fill the plane up. They idled on the tarmac for two or three idles, waiting for Artemis to get there. They burnt more fuel flying in a headwind. They had a bad motor with Newton fuel. Somebody said they was on dump a gas tank because the engine was spitting fire. That rumor they dumped all the fuel. It's just many reasons. It's 
on who you talk to. But they did they run out of gas. It wasn't no gas. Did you see that there was like an other another gang member that emptied on? Yeah. Jojo is another girl in a band. She's from Mississippi. And I won't I'm gonna say Jojo passed away. I think she's passed away not just not long ago. Mm -hmm. I know she was sick. She didn't get on that night. She said she wasn't going to ride at Peace of Joy. She Smart wouldn't get girl. on. There's a guy named Ken Payton. If he on, it was a passenger. He met him that evening when they were leaving South Carolina and taking pictures. And he said, I see y'all in Baton Rouge. And they said, oh, get on the plane with us. And he just happened to get on the plane. I talked to him. He lives in Knoxville, Tennessee. So, some of them won't fly no more. Some of them will. Steve Laurier has been in two airplane crashes. Since then, he was in another airplane crash. So, Where are they flying from? Into South Carolina to Baton Rouge to do a concert in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. This is my hatchet. They don't cut your finger. <laughs> Uh, okay, that has to be for 50 years, huh? He's got two. What, man? <laughs> He's, He's got two hatchets. He's got my hatchet. He's got two hatchets. Good gracious. He has one at home. Oh, he does. <laughs> I'm his brother, of course I know. Oh, you know, okay. We're his sister. I'll break him. Well, thanks, Jimmy. Appreciate it. It happened on a Thursday. Well, I, I, Thursday, I went home Friday night and took a bath, and then I come back and I didn't go home to Sunday. Sometime early Friday morning, I got deputized by the guy from Federal Aviation. I was made a U.S. Federal Marshal, and I was so hyped that I couldn't sleep. <laughs> I didn't go to work and but uh. We have people from all over the world to come. All I ask y'all to do is y'all sign the guest list. How old are you, Grant? 48. How old? So you were three years old. I'm seven. I ain't gonna ask nobody else. <laughs> if they won't tell me where they were that night, they can tell me. Right. But there was thousands of people down here that night. A lot of people helped. A lot of people got in the way. Got in the way. Some was up to no good. Some were just looking. A lot of people nice. helped different ways. I like to talk. Uh, huh? But if y'all want me to take a picture of y'all, a group, I will. Uh, this is your way. So. Mm -hmm. Hey, look what I found. This might be from the wreckage. Did you find that out there? Yes. Oh my goodness, eBay. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to finish it up by saying that uh, all of life is timing. So we got lucky. The guy is just a guy that uh, is on the committee for this. Happened to be at the wreck that night, and he was here. Just showed up. So normally, it's there's not a guide or anything like that. So this is uh, for me once in a lifetime chance, and uh, just it was awesome that Jamie did that and told the story. And hope you guys enjoy it.